morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. It's a Monday morning, and that means, of course, that it is time for Mission Monday. And as always, I thank you for joining me today and for giving me your time. Uh, but also, I'll say the most important thing that we can do is give God our time. And so the time that we give him is the most important thing that we can do. So let, let us go to him in prayer. Lord, use me today. Speak to your people. Let your word go forth. Open the hearts and minds of those who will hear and receive your word and then also become doers of your word, Lord God. We want to do this, Lord God, so that their faith and trust and belief in you will become even, even stronger, Lord God. We thank you today and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, our, our verse from the day is going to come from Matthew 6 and 33. And it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God for his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, it's Monday, and it's the beginning of a new week. And for most of us, especially in business, we start by reviewing and refining our plan for the week. And in similar fashion, most of us are also building and refining a plan for our lives. And when done properly, you know, it, it helps us establish these objectives to prioritize what's important to us, to make decisions based on our priorities, and then to find ways to achieve those goals. It is said that a life plan is an objective that helps you prioritize what's important to you, makes decisions based make decisions based on your priorities, and then to find ways to achieve those goals. Yet the world reminds us that in all the, that the word reminds us that is, yet the word reminds us that in, in all the planning that you do, you must never lose sight of the role God must have in your life. And that's why we are reminded in the scripture today, in this verse today, when he says to, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and in doing so, all these things shall be added unto you. For many, it's an invitation to a new reality, a reality which shifts our attention from, from our way of seeing things to that that emphasizes the kingdom. And instead of living for and then by what we can do ourselves, Jesus invites us into a life of sonship. And that's S-O-N, a sonship where provisions come because of whose we are and not because of what we do. You know, in seeking him first, God is offering to provide everything that you need, not just spiritual, but your tangible, your physical needs as well, if you simply seek his kingdom first. This is provision flows out of his kingdom because you are his child and he loves you. Not because of how you perform, how much you sweat, how hard you work, how much you strive for things on your own. So what does it mean to you when the word says, seek first the kingdom? It means that you look to God and his kingdom first for everything you need, including your purpose in life, your daily provisions, your creative inspiration, your business ideas, your family relationships, everything. And as you keep God and your relationship with him in the center of your life, all these things will be added unto you. Even more specifically, let's put it this way, to seek first the kingdom means to understand and embrace your unique design in God's kingdom, your unique gifts and talents God has equipped you with. And they are designed to bring life to you and also to be used by God to release the transformative power of his kingdom on earth. And as you do that, you know, God is faithful to release vision, provision, opportunity, open doors, and grant you authority to walk in the assignment that he has created for you. 
You know, walking in your assignment in God's kingdom assures his favor and provision for your life. And all these things, we are to draw distinction between life in the kingdom of God versus life in the kingdom of this world. Remind us that we are in this world, but not of this world. You see, God is showing you that there is a new reality available to you in his kingdom. That we can be assured that we are no longer on our own, trying to navigate life on our own strength, but rather we can enter into the kingdom of God and have every need met oh, without having to beg or strive for it. The word says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So let me say again, a life in the kingdom affects every area of your lives, including your relationships, your finances, your emotional health, and certainly spiritual growth, and so, so much more. You know, nowhere in scripture are these truths clear in, in, than in Matthew's. In this context, the scripture says, seek first the kingdom. And when we do so, his righteousness, his love, his grace, his salvation in Jesus, all these things will be added unto you. For us, he's commanding us to seek the kingdom, that we will manifest the kingdom in and through our daily lives. You know, as, as we live life according to the way God wants us to live it. And you know, the Lord's Prayer puts it this way, you know, it says, Jesus says, your kingdom come, or oh, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as we pursue the kingdom of God and the way he does things, we are used by God to bring the reality of heaven to earth. And all else will be added. You now, every need is met in abundance. Every right and privilege restored. And the son has no need for anything. Listen, Jesus is trying to teach us that what we can expect with life in the kingdom versus life we may be living now. Matthews and 6 says that, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, the body more than clothes? It says to look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. And this person, powerful one, are you not much more valuable than they? And all else, he says, all else will be added. Every need met in abundance. Every right and privilege restored. And yes, in the Son, in Jesus, we know that all things are possible. Oh, for the Son has need for nothing. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for being the God that you are. You are the light of our lives. You are grace and mercy. You are love and power. Let, your, let our hearts draw near to you today. We seek you with all our hearts because we know that our desires are found and fulfilled in you. So we want to know you, Lord. Your word says that, that we are to seek you for you desire a relationship with us. And to that we say yes. To you, Lord God, we say yes. So reveal yourself to us today as we seek your face. Now lead us and guide our steps and open our hearts so that we seek you. And when we do so, we can become closer and closer to you. So help us, strengthen us. Let us know that we can hear your voice because we want to be your people. And when we hear your voice, we will respond. And Father, as always, today we, we pray for our leaders. 
We pray for those in this nation, Lord God. We pray for those who are leading the world. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that's going on, that safety is out there. In this troubled world in which we're in, Lord God, we pray that there will be calm. We pray, Lord God, there can be unity, Lord God. Father, we pray, Father, for our medical teams that are out there, our nurses, doctors, our statisticians, our caregivers, who are in the places, Lord God, who are rarely seen, Father, but they are so critical to those in our lives that we love dearly. And Father, we pray for our protectors, those that are on the front line, our firefighters, Lord God, our police officers. We pray for our soldiers in uniform, whether or not they're here on the streets, in which we live every day, Lord God, which we drive on, or whether or not they're across the world somewhere, Lord God, we pray for our military today, Lord God. And of course, I'd be remiss if we didn't pray for the needy. I know it, Lord God, your word tells us that the needy will always be amongst us, but Lord God, we pray for them. And we pray for those who give. Yes, we pray for those who you've given this abundance to that I mentioned early on. That the abundance that come is not just for us, Father, that we might do the right thing and help take care of the people that are amongst us. So, Father, continue to grant that abundance to us and open our hearts that we will give to those that are in need. We'll also give to the organizations that are in our community who are supporting the needies, who are running programs to help the people in our community who may have less, Father, but you're making a way, who may need a place where they can go and have peace and quiet and, and we can have a moment with their friends. We pray, Lord God, that we will open our hearts and give to those organizations as well. And Father, we thank you today and we continue to pray for those that are on the call today. Be with them, be with their families, be with their loved ones, Lord God. Be the doctor when there's a need, be the friend when they're lonely, Lord God. We ask you to be the one that's the provider for them. Grant them what they need, Father. Hold their hands and keep them strong and close to you, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you today. We love you so much. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. And as always, as always, you know, if there's a need for prayer, anything that's going on in your life and you'd like to have someone to talk to, always know that God is with you because you'll never walk alone. But I also know that I'm with you as well. And all you got to do is reach out to me, call me, text me, email me, and I'll be there for you. We love you today and continue, continue to walk in his grace and travel in his love. We love you today.